In today's tabletop review, I'm going to be discussing a complete upper receiver assembly made by Radical Firearms. This is a 16 inch barrel upper receiver and it's a complete upper receiver. It includes the uh, charging handle and a uh, full auto bolt carrier group. Radical Firearms list this as a law enforcement grade drop-in upper receiver group ready to be mounted to any mil-spec AR-15 lower receiver. Now they list this barrel as a SOCOM profile barrel. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit later and I'll talk about that as well. Uh, and it has a mid-length gas system, a 15 inch key mod railed handguard. It's chambered in 556 NATO. The finish on it is a melanite uh, QPQ finish. Uh, I believe it is finished on the inside and outside of the barrel. So this is not a chrome line barrel. It's a mel melanited QPQ or nitrided QPQ. Um, has a low profile gas block. The barrel is made out of 4150 chrome moly vandium or vandium, however you want to pronounce it, steel. And the barrel is actually made by E.R. Shaw. The receiver is an A3 style uh, upper receiver. Um, the thread pitch of the barrel is one and a half by 28. The twist rate of the barrel is one and seven twist. Um, the barrel process is button rifled. Feed ramps are the M4 feed ramps and um, it has a standard A2 flash hider. Now, with all that said, um, this is a item that is on my website. Um, there is a link to this upper on the description of this video. I sell this, as you see it, complete for $325. That is a phenomenal price for a receiver like this, a bolt carry group and a charging handle. I, I placed an order for a small quantity of these and even before I had a chance to do a review, I sold them all. I, I could have sold this one as well, uh, but I wanted to keep it and do a review. So the link in the description of the video will take you to this product on my website. Uh, it is out of stock, but there is a um, there's a hyperlink there that says email me when back in stock. I suggest if you're interested in purchasing one of these at $325, click on that link, punch in your email address. That way, when I get inventory in and I add it to my site, you'll be emailed immediately and you can go and you can buy one of these. Um, this is just a phenomenal price at $325. For example, if you go to Radical Firearms website and you find this on their website, I think it's $320 on their website, but you don't get a bolt carrier group or a charging handle. So this is by far a phenomenal pricing structure. I mean, mid-length gas system, 15-inch key mod handguard, and the bolt carrier group, and the charging handle, wow. Okay, so enough about that. Um, let's talk about this package. Um, I like everything I see about this package, especially at the price point. Uh, now, the charging handle, um, there's there's nothing really to, to get excited about with the charging handle. This is just your standard charging handle. But again, you know, this is a $15, $20 item, and it's included. Now, the bolt carrier group, I've already I've taken these out already. Um, I, this looks like a, uh, it's, it's hard to say, but this looks like it, it's a, a, maybe a parkerized outer finished with a melanite lining. Uh, I don't know for sure because they, they Radical Firearms, does not say anything about this. Um, I did try to do a bit of research on this. Uh, it's pretty obvious that this is a, you know, um, an M16 or a full auto profile. It has a stainless steel firing pin. Um, 
the bolt only has an X stamp on it, which doesn't really tell me a whole lot. Um, I, I'm just, if you know what the X stamp on this bolt means, by feel free to leave uh, a comment on this video because I honestly don't know. I've not seen a bolt with an X stamped on it. Normally bolts have nothing on them or they might have a C. They indicate they're made by Colts or a D, <coughs> excuse me, for DPMS or a double D for Daniel Defense, an MP for magnetic particle inspected or an HP for high pressure tested. Uh, those are all pretty common stampings. The X, um, I don't know. Uh, I did manage to come up with a little bit of information that tells me that the bolt's probably a 9310 steel, um, but aside from that, I, I, I can't comment on it. Um, it's It's got a kind of a different design to it. These um, these areas on the bolt here are flat and flat here and flat here. They kind of come to a, a point like a little pyramid, um, you know, almost a hexagonal shape. Um, a lot of bolt carrier groups are rounded in these areas, and this one is not. Uh, this does, um, uh, not that that's an issue, that's not an issue at all. I'm just commenting on the, on the design of this. Um, and I've already taken this apart. Um, I'm not going to do it again on, on, on video here because uh, it is rather dirty. Um, this entire upper receiver has been test fired. Um, you can see, let's see if I can focus on that. You can see in the end of the bolt there, you've got some uh, uh, brass res residue. Um, so I don't believe that this, you know, one or two rounds was fired through this. I think, um, you know, half a magazine or even a full magazine was shot, shot through this. Um, and they, they didn't clean it before they, they uh, reboxed it up. Uh, so, um, is this the best bolt carrier group on the market? No, not by far. But for the price of this, and you're getting a bolt carrier group, I mean, even if you don't want to use this bolt carrier group, you can buy this upper and sell this for $100 and, and then you know, uh, put your own bolt carrier group in this. So this bolt carrier group has value. Uh, it, it appears to be a well-made bolt carrier group. I just am a, a little fuzzy about some of the details and the materials that are, that it's made out of. And, um, Radical Firearms doesn't even have separate bolt carrier groups listed on their website right now. So it's not like you can go and kind of research and see what they have to say about it. Anyway, uh, don't want to hype, or I don't want to put too much hype on the bolt carrier group and, and the unknowns of that. Let's move on to the upper. Um, the fit and finish of this, um, the black coloring is great. Um, there are no T marks on this upper receiver. There are no laser marked T marks. Um, I, I, that's kind of disappointing because uh, I, I kind of like those, but it's not a deal breaker. Um, this handguard is Pretty damn nice. Um, you can see right up here, um, we've got the Radical Firearms logo. It is a key mod. Uh, it's skeletonized. By, by, you can tell by all the holes on here. Uh, these are just venting holes. And you can see the key mod here. And of course, there's key mod on the bottom. And then it has integrated rail sections here. Um, of course, all the way along the top, but right here and along the bottom, about four or five inches. And this is two or three inches right there. I believe these upper front holes are for sling swivels uh, because they are the holes are drilled in an offset pattern, which I do believe is for um, uh, for use with uh, QD sling swivels. So you could put a sling swivel here, I believe, or here, or on the other side as well. Um, it does not come with any additional rail sections. So if you wanted to do something down here, you would have to buy some key mod rails. The um, uh, low, it has a low profile gas block, uh, stainless steel uh, um, mid-length gas tube you can see right there. Um, the flash hider is your standard A2 flash hider and there is a crush washer on there so it does appear to be timed correctly. The upper receiver, 
Um, there are um, some marks right here. Some marks right here from the brass hitting it. Um, uh, and there is, of course, some um, powder residue on the inside of the upper receiver. Um, it does not look like this upper receiver has a dry film uh, lube applied to it. Normally that'd be a light gray finish on the inside. Um, the inside of this looks like the outside. Um, and of course we have the brass deflector. Um, I believe that little key lock uh, symbol here indicates that this is a Cerro Forge upper, or at least the block was from Cerro Forge. I don't know who machined it. Um, the uh, a bolt assist device. Um, other comments. Uh, let's see. This handguard uses a proprietary barrel nut. We'll take a look at that when I take the handguard off. You can see the um, profile. Um, you can see that this handguard is a bit wide. Um, um, I'm not sure. Well, let's say, um, let me say, I like really thin handguards. So the smaller they are, the better they are for my small hand to grip. This one is not unreasonable size-wise. Some are just way too big. This one is not unreasonable. It, it's a little bit thicker. Um, the girth is, is thicker than, say, a Troy Alpha. But I think the added girth of this is probably a good thing because if you were running like a, a short barrel uh, inside of this handguard and you wanted to insert a, a, a sound suppressor and uh, recess it back in underneath the handguard. There's enough girth here you can do that. Some handguards are so tight you wouldn't be able to do that. Like the, the Troy Alpha Rail, you're real limited. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, uh, you'll remember the problems I had trying to get a crank uh, muzzle device underneath a Troy Alpha Rail. I actually had to modify the Troy Alpha Rail uh, to get the uh, crank underneath it. Uh, so something like this that's a little bit wider is good for, for, for those instances where you're going to run your sound suppressor or a crank break or, or anything else that might go underneath the handguard. Uh, so it's not too big. Um, the design of it's uh, aesthetically pleasing. The colors match the upper on it. Um, I don't see any machining marks. Um, I don't know what material this is made out of. I think it's safe to assume it's a 6061 aluminum, which is kind of common for these types of handguards. It is extremely light. Um, so going with a 15 inch uh, handguard is not really adding a lot of weight to this. So, I mean, if you chopped it down to 13 inches, um, I can't imagine it shaving off a whole lot of weight. This thing is just really super light. Uh, it attaches to the proprietary barrel nut with four 332nd bolts here, or eight 332nd bolts. There's four on each side. Um, the handguard is notched right up here, so it just slides straight on and uh, aligns itself. And of course, to get the bolts in, it has to be aligned correctly as well. So it's it's not like some rails where they have to go on at an angle and you have to twist them into place. Or if you're not careful, you bolt it down and then the the railing on the upper receiver and the handguard don't align. You're not going to have a problem like that with this setup, um, which is good. Um, um, that is about all of the comments I have at this juncture. Uh, I think the next step is to go ahead and take this handguard off and we'll take a look at the barrel and the, the gas block and see what kind of roll marks are on the barrel. And uh, you can also take a look at the um, barrel nut as well. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do that off camera and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, there are eight three thirty second bolts that you need to remove, and the handguard will slide right off. Uh, so no no issues there. 
Uh, these bolts were not on very tight. And it doesn't look like there's any thread locker on them either. Um, so um, these are steel bolts and this looks like it might be a steel barrel nut assembly. Um, probably would be a good idea to have blue thread locker on those so they don't loosen up on you. Uh, so proprietary barrel nut, um, mid-length uh, stainless steel um, gas tube. Uh, you know, what it would be really nice to see on this is a black gas tube, a black melanited gas tube, um, especially since this is such a skeletonized handguard. You can really see the chrome um, through the uh, openings on the handguard. So. That's just a, uh, an aesthetics issue that, uh, uh, again, just happens to be a pet peeve of mine. Um, so the barrel, um, obviously you can see there's really no cutouts on this barrel. Um, there is somewhat of a scallop here. Um, so I, I don't, I wouldn't really even qualify this as a heavy barrel. Um, so maybe this um, this scalloping here is not as aggressive as like on an M4 profile barrel. Um, I'd have to measure one. I'd have to measure the two side by side. But uh, it I've used heavy barrels before, and most heavy barrels are pretty solid all the way all the way through. I also think the SOCOM has another notch back here behind where the gas block goes for something a flat notch on both sides, as well as the 203 cutout. Um, no big deal there though. Um, we've also got a standard radical firearms uh, low profile gas block. Um, and the barrel is stamped 556 NATO 17 for the twist rate on it. That appears to be the only stamping. Um, Just kind of taking a look at uh, um, I don't see anything out of the ordinary there. Um, appears to be very well put together, from what I can tell. Um, there's no um, uh, scratches or marks from vice grips or anything out of the ordinary there. Um, we've got. Um, the uh, gas tube roll pin is a little smushed. Um, no big deal there. Um, I do not know if the barrel was dimpled for um, these bolts um, or if there's any um, Loctite on there. The handguard itself, um, I don't know the weight of this handguard. It is very light. Um, it does have some alignment tabs over here um, that slide underneath the upper receiver to know that it's fully aligned. So I don't think this is, is the type of a, a handguard that can go on and end up being crooked. Uh, these alignment tabs as well as these holes for the bolts, they all need to line up on this proprietary barrel nut. Um, and in case you didn't see this, oops, knocking the camera over again. Radical Firearms logo on the front of this. Um, I guess if I had to be nitpicky about this handguard, I'd like it to be a little bit thinner, but I know if you start getting too thin with this, then uh, 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 flash suppre or, uh, uh, sound suppressors and such won't fit underneath here. So um, I, I guess I'm kind of spoiled. I'm used to using the Troy uh, Alpha rails. Those are really thin. Um, and this isn't too big. You can still, you know, I have a fairly small hand. You can still grip this pretty well. So uh, it's definitely not too large. 
it's just hard to find anything wrong here to complain about. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm not being completely uh, honest if I don't find something wrong. Um, um, just looking at this upper receiver on the inside. Um, yeah, I don't see anything jumping out at me. Um, I'm very impressed with what I've seen at this point. Um, aside from some uh, issues with the bolt carrier group, um, you know, not knowing the actual type of finish on the bolt carrier group or what the bolt's made out of or if it's high pressure tested or magnetically particly or magnetic particle inspected um, you know those are some unknowns and I, I definitely don't like unknowns when it comes to buying something when I'm when I'm spending my money on something I like to know exactly what I'm getting um, but at this price point the fact that you're even getting a bolt carrier group is awesome so even if it's not the best bolt carrier group on the market um, so let's assume that it's a 9310 bolt carrier group it's not MPI or HP tested and it's got a melanite finish on it um, that's still a hundred dollar bolt carrier group pretty much how you know uh, you can buy this take the bolt carrier group out and sell it and put your own bolt carrier group in and still be way ahead of the curve for the price uh, same with the charging handle you know those charging handles are 15 20 bucks something like that they're not very much money um, but it is a charging handle and it does come with it um, if you go to radical firearms website and you look at this item on their website it's like 320 dollars and it doesn't come with a bolt carrier group or a charging handle so uh, I think everything else here is uh, completely usable um, the uh, barrel is the right pro, um, uh, it's made out of the right material it's got the right twist on it it's a 556 five, NATO uh, it's a 16 inch barrel uh, so you don't have any type of uh, um, uh, you know legality issues you can uh, change out the flash hider and put anything you want on it and of course the uh, 15 inch key mod handguard is great as well um, now it doesn't uh, one thing I didn't notice mention this particular kit doesn't come with any additional rail sections so you have to make use of the integrated rail sections on the handguard it doesn't come with any tools either uh, like I mentioned these bolts are 332nd um, and I do not believe they're metric I believe they're 332nd I went through my metric uh, hex keys and none of them quite matched up 100% so I had to break out the uh, uh, SAE standard uh, wrenches for to, to take it apart um, I'm just going through my notes here um, I don't have anything else to add uh, again this is on my website check the link in the description um, they are out of stock but click on the email me when they're back in stock link uh, punch in your email address and you'll get notified when I have these back in stock uh, I do have a small uh, quantity of these on order and I suspect they're not going to stay around uh, uh, very long uh, at this price point. So that's going to wrap up this uh, unboxing, disassemble and tabletop review of the Radical Firearms 16 inch upper receiver uh, with the Silcom profile barrel in 5.56 mid-length gas.